Industrial Revolution could be said to have uh, delivered to humans a form of body extension, uh, and, and the Electronic Revolution forms of mind extension, it seems to me that we're in a new phase where both the body and the mind extension can be presented in the form of a useful machine. And speaking of a useful machine, if it turns out that uh, bomb-clearing robots either didn't work or if your military didn't have any, then you probably will be a customer for Daniel Theobald's robot called the BEAR, B-E-A-R, Battlefield Extraction Assist Robot that can help carry wounded from the field of action. Daniel. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I have two research projects that I actually want to talk to you about. One is the bear robot, which presumably was my ticket here. So we'll jump right into that. The other is sort of a lifelong passion I've had about um, responsible capitalism or, or creating companies that uh, have a focus of not just profits but world betterment and some of the experiments that we've been doing in that area. He just talked about the horror stories of going out there to get somebody who was shot and getting shot yourself. I was an Army Special Forces officer, and I know what it's like to send your guys out there in harm's way. One of the most remarkable medbots being developed is Vecna Technologies Bear, a robot that looks more like a human than a vehicle. The Bear, the Battlefield Extraction and Recovery Vehicle, essentially uh, is this very exciting technology because the Bear has a unique capabilities that humans have to some extent. It can bend down, it can pick up a casualty, it can shift positions, it can turn them sideways to go upstairs and downstairs uh, inside a building, it can, it can avoid obstacles. Our approach is build a robot that's small, agile, and can do lots of things like load a truck or carry gear for the soldiers. And then when there is a casualty, there'll be one around. Over a little bit of this, uh, I tried to just condense. They had asked us to bring the robot and um, just didn't work out. The idea of this robot is that we needed a robot that could essentially go where humans can, but have the ability to lift a significant amount of weight. And that was something that was missing in the robotics uh, that, are, uh, that I am aware of that are in progress or have been deployed. Um, when you do that, you've got an interesting problem. Anytime you've got something that's got a small contact, uh, ground contact footprint, but it's relatively massive, this robot's able to lift over 600 pounds in addition to its own weight, you have this balance problem. And you see that the robot can drive down on its, uh, we call this centaur mode when it's down on its hips. It can drive sitting down like this as well, it can drive on its knees, and uh, as you saw in some pictures, it can drive standing up as well. Um, so very versatile, but you've got this balancing problem, of course, and it's actually balancing is not that hard of a problem. It turns out when you have wheels, it's actually quite a bit easier. So. A lot of excitement. This is a hand controller. You can see when you have a robot with this many degrees of freedom, this complexity, you really have to start thinking about how can you make it easy and intuitive for an operator to control. So that's the bear. And uh, maybe just a couple of quick facts of the bear, FAQs, I guess. Um, what's up with the head? Well, um, Somebody chose the name Bear, and so we made a bear-looking head. And then, of course, all of the other stuff evolved, you know, sort of develops around that. Um, we needed a place to put some sensors. It's kind of fun. I wanted to talk a little bit about my other great life passion. And this is, this is something that I've thought a lot about over the years. Um, really started out when I was a teenager, 13 years old. I started thinking about this issue of uh, redefining the word success. I'd noticed even then that when people talked about success, it tended to imply money. It tended to imply financial success. That that's, that's, you know, when you saw somebody and they said, oh, that person is very successful. Money, right? They made money. Um, and that didn't sit well with me. 
And I think that uh, it, it became clear to me that if we could figure out how to recharacterize success and teach that and learn that and accept that, that success, first and foremost, is helping others. And that is what truly allows us to have a meaningful life. Um, it's a hard problem, of course. How do we do that? And so there, there are three areas that I've thought about how we might be able to make some progress in this area. One, I think, clearly is family. Two is uh, peers, education, schooling. There's a lot there. Um, and, and number three, which I'll talk about, is uh, corporations and, and the responsibilities of corporations. Um, it, it seems like a lot of, a lot of what goes on um, with people is, and, and with myself, is worrying about being right. I spend a lot of time worrying about being right, and, and if I could just spend more time worrying about doing right rather than being right, I think a lot of the problems that we have in the world could go away. So Vecna, we pay our employees to do community service four hours out of every work week. Um, we work very, very hard to instill in them this sense of responsibility, this sense of integrity, of um, working as a team, of helping others, this, this quality of life issue. Um, our employees really work hard to achieve a proper work-life balance. And so we started out this experiment asking the question, could you build a company that was socially responsible and profitable? Could you build a company that didn't treat employees as a resource to try and extract every ounce of value and then um, toss them aside? And, and there was a lot of skepticism early on. Um, a lot of my colleagues out of uh, Harvard Business School scoffed at the idea, that's not the way it works, you can't do that, you'll never survive. Um, well, I'm pleased to report that uh, we have taken that idea from uh, it will never work to it's, it's probably possible. It's probably possible, and that's very encouraging to me. We're now 65 people. In our company, we're poised for really explosive growth as we take a number of our products. Robotics is actually uh, less than 10% of what we do as a company. We do a lot of healthcare um, tools. We help hospitals track uh, hospital-acquired infections, antimicrobial resistance. These are things that kill tens of thousands of people a year, cost our healthcare systems uh, hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. Um, lots of other things we do as a company that are very exciting. Thank you.